What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. We are still waiting for the oil pan and pickup tube, all that stuff for the TDI motor. So I figured it'd be a good time to tackle a couple other projects on the truck while we're waiting for those parts to show up. So what I wanna do is pull the fuel tank out of the truck, see if we can get that lift pump installed in the factory assembly. If it's anything like the older trucks, like the red truck I built, it should be a breeze. That one bolted right in pretty much. It was a very, very simple process. So that's what we're gonna shoot for today is getting that fuel pump in. So we gotta drop the tank out. I already got it drained. What I did was I ended up just hooking up my vacuum bleeder to the feed line here. I pulled the skid plate off of the tank because on, on the older trucks, they have actually a drain bolt on the tank, but these ones don't. So ended up sucking all the fuel out that way. So we are dry, pretty easy to drop the tank. There's just a couple bolts on the front and then a main strap that runs around this here filler tube. Doesn't even need to, it's, it doesn't bolt in like the older ones. It's just kind of sitting in there with a, a grommet around it. So once we drop the tank, that should fall right out. And then we gotta probably drop it down just enough to be able to disconnect the fuel lines and the electrical connector unless yeah, probably not gonna be able to squeeze up in there, but we'll drop the tank down enough, get that all disconnected, and then we'll pull the tank out and see if we can get that pump in. Alright, we got the tank out. There was a lot more to this EVAP system than I thought. A lot more hoses going up to the neck and everything. So, got the tank out either way. Now we need to pull this whole sending unit out and see if we can't fit the Volkswagen pump in this unit here. And all this stuff here, I think I'll just cap, cap that, cap that. And then we gotta figure out how to get this little adapter or a little reducer inside of this filler hose out of there because the diesel nozzle will not fit. So we gotta figure that out as well. All right, we got this whole sending unit out with the pump and it looks very, very close to what was in the older pickups. So this should be a absolute breeze to get this thing to fit. So you can see it's just a little bit taller, but the hose barb is the same size. All we gotta do really is splice into these wires, connect the wires up and we gotta check the bottom. It looks like this one isn't completely round, so we might have to grind that out to be able to fit the bottom of this pump through the bottom of this hanger here, but it shouldn't be that big of an issue. So let's rip this pump out, see what we can do to fit the new pump in. Now I also bought a new strainer from Napa. There's the part number A0003S. So this is the same one I actually put in the other truck. You can see right there, so this, fits nice and snug over the bottom of the pump and it's got little barbs inside of here to keep it in it'll kind of dig into that plastic on the pump and keep that strainer on so shouldn't be a big deal let's see what we can do to get this pump to fit All right, you can see the bottom of the hanger isn't quite round and this pump does not fit through it. So that's what we need to do. We need to get that round so that we can stick the pump through the bottom of that hanger. So looks like we just really need to take these little edges off here 
and that should go through no problem so we'll grind that out There we go guys, it's that easy. So I kind of wire tied it up just to make sure it's not moving around. And then that little jet I was talking about right on the bottom there, I just wired it to the return line. So that should work no problem. The wires reach no problem. So that is good to go. So I wanna say this isn't the only way to do this. You can use the factory pump, but you have to take your feed and your return line and basically run a hose in between them because that pump puts out way too much pressure. So the extra pressure that is going to the pump can recirculate back into the tank through that little hose between the two. But with how easy this is to swap in the diesel pump into this hanger, I don't know why you would even mess with it. I think it is best to use the factory pump that supplies the tandem pump on the TDI. So. We are good to go. The last thing I gotta do is just get the last little bit of fuel out of the bottom of the tank. And then we can throw that whole pump back in and get the tank back in. And then I want to give the skid plate over there, that rusty hunk of junk. I wanna give that a paint job real quick too. And then we do have to figure out how to get that little reducer out of the inside of the filler neck. All right, we got this little baffle piece or whatever it is out. It wasn't too bad. What I did first was took my carbide burr right there to the, there's two little spot welds in there. 
And then once that broke free, you just kind of have to bend it out. I kind of screwed the neck up a little bit, not too bad, not too big of a deal. So we'll wash this out, make sure there's no more metal shavings in it, and we can put the tank back in. All right, we got the fuel tank and skid plate all buttoned up. I wanted to go over one thing real quick. I'm not gonna tackle this right now, but I just wanted to show you. This is the circuit opening relay. Basically, the fuel pump relay right here, and the positive wire directly runs from the fuel pump up to here, which is this blue wire here. So all we really gotta do is cut this wire here and tap that into the relay from the Volkswagen harness and this pump will be powered. So very simple to do. We don't need this at all. You can go up in the fuse box in the engine bay and pull the fuse and relay out for the EFI for that because we don't need it. So the next thing I wanna tackle in this video is I wanna get this pedal mounted and this might be a bit of a pain just because there's not a whole lot of room up here. We gotta pull the other pedal out, the factory pedal. We gotta pull this out but this electronic motor here for the heater is kind of gonna be in the way and this pedal is kind of bulky. So I gotta figure out what to do. I might have to kind of remake the actual pedal of it, but somehow we need to actually mount this onto the firewall. So let's pull this pedal out and see what we can do. Hopefully this doesn't take too much work to make this thing fit. Well, we got the pedal out and trying to fit this one back in here and you can tell this pedal, at least this part of the pedal is not going to work. I can't even get it remotely close. So I think this is one of those moments where we're gonna have to just go for it and hope we don't screw this thing up because these are expensive. So what I'm planning on doing is probably cut this pedal somewhere, maybe just cut on that line for now and somehow adapt and bolt this pedal onto that bracket there. But the only other issue is we don't have much clearance to mount this piece all the way up in there because you can see, like I said, that little motor for the, the heater is kind of in the way, but it's hard to tell if it's gonna clear or not with this pedal on it. Well guys, after a very long time of messing with this thing, trying to get this arm off because I need to rotate it, how it was set up before, the arm was hitting the floor before I could even get this thing flat. So what I end up doing is clamping it in the vise like this, taking a big punch and just smacking it. And this arm is on there with a tapered spline. So it kind of locks in place pretty, actually pretty tight. So it was a bear to get off, but now I can position this pedal however I want on this actual mount here. So first thing we need to do, get this mounted and then we can cut this pedal off and bend up this other pedal, the stock Tacoma pedal, figure out a way to mount it onto here and then we should be good.
Well, this is proving to be pretty difficult and a little tricky to get fit in here. So I got all the holes drilled, I got it mounted. It's gonna sit right about like that. And then I got this pedal here, which I need to mount onto the other pedal. So what I think I'm gonna do is just plate on top and bottom from here, weld it onto this metal piece, and then I'll bolt it through this plastic piece of that lever. And we'll see how that'll work. All right, I figured I'd show you guys as I'm going along building this. So that's what I came up with so far. I'm gonna put two bolts through the whole block and kind of cinch everything together. And there's all this bracing inside, so it really shouldn't squish in or deform that plastic piece. All right guys, there is the final product. It doesn't uh, look too professional, but it'll definitely do the job. So it's gonna mount just right here and gotta get that bolt in to keep it there, but looks like the pedal is gonna sit right about there, which is right pretty much how the factory pedal sits. It does sit at an angle like that. So pretty happy with that. Now I'm just gonna pull this thing back apart give it a quick paint job, and then we can throw it back together and be done with it. There it is guys, pedal is on, working great. It's got plenty of travel, it's not bottoming out on the firewall at all, and fits really good in there. So very, very happy with how that turned out. Well, that's a wrap guys. We should have the oil pan and everything we need to get this motor back together here in a couple days. So once we get that stuff in, we'll tackle the motor, get that all back together. I have the adapter plate ordered up. It's supposed to be around two weeks, I should have it. So. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will show up on time and we can get the motor dropped into the truck and figure out what we need to do to make everything fit like it should. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.